What's up, people? It's your boy, Acro Brandon, and here we are with another 60-minute Pole Power Express class. This is a level 1-2 class, so that means that if you are a level 1 or a level 2 student, level 1, you're new, you're a beginner, level 2, you're like an advanced beginner, you're working on your inversions, right, inside, outside, leg hangs, brass monkey type of stuff, you're, you have some abilities to climb the pole. So this is class number two. I am starting to number the classes so I can use these on different platforms instead of a particular day of the week. Uh, we're gonna get started here. We're gonna do a 10 to 15 minute quick warm up, and then we'll have about 45 minutes worth of class time doing pole conditioning, typically grip strength, grabs, some abs, maybe some stuff on the ground, okay? Uh, if you need to grab anything, go ahead and get that set up. Right, you've got a mat, yoga blocks, some water, your grip, all of the good stuff, and then we're gonna get started here right away. I'm actually switching it up just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna play a little music, so we'll have that in the background now, so it's not so quiet, but a little something to, to tickle the ears as we're going through the warm up. And as always, if you'd love to support me and tip me, payment details will be down below in the video, or Venmo, Acro Brandon, PayPal, Acro Brandon, and Gmail. Always works depending on which platform you're watching this on, paid or not. Anyways, let's get started. All right, here we go, getting started. Feet a little bit wider than the hips, starting with a quick little rock to the right, to the left, shaking out the hips from side to side, waking up the spine, feeling their outer blade of the foot as you shift left and right. And then from here, rolling it around on a circle, feel all four sides of your feet. Yes, maybe the heels and toes will lift or not, depending on how you're rolling it out. You know, just getting loose here. Other direction, Feeling all four sides of the foot, slowing it back down to center. Nice and slow with the arms reaching up, an arch at the top, folding over, scoop at the bottom, back up to the top. Arch, fold and scoop, keep going. A little bit faster, arch, fold and scoop, back up. Arch, fold and scoop, back up. Two more. Last full one, stay standing, dropping the arms, shoulder circles to the back, rolling it out nice and slow, <laughs> nice and medium slow, I guess for me. Three, two, one, to the front. Three, two, one, back to center. Into the chest, chest forward, arch back, ribs back and round. Front and arch. Back and round. Three, two, last full one. Back to center. Keeping the chest steady, slide the ribs to the right, to the left. Side to side. Try to keep the hips where they are. Just move the ribs from side to side. Like, look around the corner, look around the corner. Look around the corner, look around the corner. And then keep it steady and level from side to side. Two more. Last one, back to center, down into the pelvis, tucking it in, tilting it back, tuck, tilt, front, back, four, three, two, last one, and stay here. Hips to the right, down to the left, side to side, straight leg as you push through from side to side, the hamstrings are a little tight from stretching yesterday. Feels kind of good though. Two more. Last full one. Back to center from here. Arch melt it forward, forward fold. Straighten out the legs. Dangle, swivel, swing, whatever's feeling good for you there. My hamstring's super tight. Now I'm really feeling it. If you've got blocks, you can always grab those, keep them underneath the hands. And a little shift of the hips left and right. Maybe grabbing the elbows, dangle, swivel, swing, whatever's feeling good for you. And then from here, slow it down. Walk your hands over to the left side, left ankle, right hand, left arm in the air for a twist. Rolling out the wrist. Four, three, two. Roll the wrist other direction. Four, three, two. Pausing here, twist a little deeper, bringing it back down. Other side, right ankle, left hand, right arm in the air for a twist. Rolling out the wrist. Four, three, two. Roll it other direction. Four. 
three, two, one. Twisting a little deeper, reaching back further, bringing it back down. Hands are down on the mat in front of you, arms straight and locked out, looking forward the entire time. Getting ready to squat the booty towards the floor nice and slow. Here we go, and down, and up. Down, and up. This time, a little bit quicker. Down, and up. Down, and up. Three, two, one. Back to center. From here, soften the knees, starting to roll up. Push the pelvis forward, roll through the spine. And then arch and melt it back down. Tucking the pelvis, rolling up. Push the pelvis forward. Arch and melt in. Tucking, pushing forward. Arch and melt back. Two more. Last full one, meet me standing. Pausing at the top, nice deep inhale in. Exhale out. And we're gonna reverse now. Head, chin, chest, dive, straight legs. Head first, nice and slow. Chin, chest, dive, straight legs. Head first, two more. Last full one. Pausing at the top. Just shift the hips left and right. Getting ready for side lunges left and right. Facing forward to the right first. Here we go. Inside. Add the hands. Left and right. Two and fro. Two more. Last full one. Coming back to the right side. Feet facing forward for just a second. And then maybe bringing it down a little bit lower. If you need your blocks, go ahead and grab them. Right foot is nice and flat all the way through. If you cannot create this shape, prop yourself up. Neutral spine, try not to be a hunchback. Try not to be reaching out to find balance, yes. Maybe you'll need to prop yourself up behind whatever is working for you. And then shifting to the other side. This actually feels really good. Sorry if you're following me live on Instagram. I've been MIA for a couple of weeks doing some other man things around the house, building things, projects. I needed to teach a class. Mm -hmm. Coming back to the right side. Turning to the right, runner's lunge. Rocking it out, use the blocks to help prop yourself up if you need it. Rocking back and forth, just loosening things up. Slowing down, rear leg straight and engage, yes? Front knee is right over the ankle, so not forwards or behind. Just little pulses of the pelvis towards the ground without bending the rear leg. Three, two, one. Turn back towards the front. Shift to the left side. Turning to the left, runner's lunge over here. Same deal. Rocking it out, just loosening things up first. If you didn't know, we just signed a lease today on a small office spot here in Norwalk. Well, we'll be bringing you tons of liquid classes and more of my virtual classes in a really nice space. Ceilings are just a little bit higher. Pause, real leg strength engage, front knee right over the ankles, little pulses of the pelvis to the ground, up and down, nice and slow. Ceiling's like nine feet, so it's a little improvement, still not high enough, but way better than what we're currently working with. Bouncing it out. Turning back towards the front, back to the center, and then readjust, yes? Blocks to the side, nice deep, grand plie, no hands if you can, neutral spine. Down a little lower, squeeze. Down to the forearms. Turn to the left, push open the right knee maybe. Turning to the other direction. Back to the center, hands are down on the mat in front of you, up onto the balls of the feet, forward fold. Once again, just shake it out. Hamstrings should start to be feeling a little bit looser. I'm enjoying this. And then from here, setting up into a down dog, turning whatever direction you want to, whatever one is comfortable, fingers spread wide, hands are active, feet a little bit wider than the hips, just starting to settle into a nice high V, trying to get the chest between the shoulders, arms straight and locked out, pushing out of the shoulder sockets, maybe pedaling out the legs, okay? 
This isn't a dance class. Don't over pump it. Only enough to loosen up the calves, hamstrings, wherever you're at. And then start to settle in, trying to get the legs as straight as possible. Squeezing the hamstrings, not the hamstrings, squeezing the quads to get rid of the micro bend. From here, shifting forward, top of plank, shoulders are over the wrist. If you need to drop to your knees, you can. Otherwise, you're in a full plank if you've got it. From here, lower the pelvis, up dog. Arms still nice and strong. Pelvis is off the ground. We're on our toes for right now. Look how my shoulders are stacked over my hands right now. So I'm not this forward into the wrist. I'm not way back here yet. Try to find that alignment as we go through these bits and pieces. Pushing back up, down dog. Two breaths. Once again, shifting forward, top of plank. Two breaths here, full or modified on the knees. Lowering the pelvis, up dog, thighs off the ground, nice strong arms pushing out of the ground. Once again, back up to down dog. From here, walking the hands back towards the feet, you're in a forward fold, legs are straight. Maybe you need blocks if you can't touch, but if you can, you're here. Just waking up the hamstrings, little pulses down, nothing crazy, not going for a super forward fold yet, but we will do a hamstring stretch and then we're going to get into the strength and conditioning for today's class. So from here, bending the knees, chest is on top of the thighs, wrap your hands behind your knees, grab the elbows or the forearms, whatever's working for you. We're going to do two sets, three reps each at my pace. We're going to slowly start to straighten, straighten, straighten the legs. Do not let your belly come off of the thighs. If you can't get your legs straight with your chest on the thighs, that's where you stop. Look at me, I don't have straight legs. I still have a bend. Don't give me this where there's space and you round through the back. From here, yes? And then release a little tension. Bend your knees or drop your booty. Straight and straight and straight and stretch, stretch, stretch. Release a little tension, one more. Straighten, 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 stretch, stretch, stretch. Release the hands, swivel out the hips, maybe pedal the legs or pump the feet. Or if you've got blocks, that's just the first set. We're gonna do one more. One more time, bending the knees, chest on top of the thighs, hands come around the back of the knees, hugging in the entire time, keeping the chest on the thighs, no matter what. Slowly start to straighten, 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 stretch, stretch, stretch. And release. Straighten, 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 stretch, stretch, stretch. Release, a little tension. Last one. Straighten, 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 stretch, stretch, stretch. Release the arms and hands, pedaling it back out. Walking the hands back forward to down dog. From here, shifting forward into a tabletop. Push back into a... Child's pose, couple quick breaths, knees wide, feet together, booty on the heels, arms and hands out in front of you. Just a couple rest breaths here. And then from here, shifting forward into a tabletop. Shoulders over the wrists, hips are over the knees. Knees a little bit wider than the hips. Simple cat and cow, think about tilting the pelvis, it rolls to the spine and then the head lifts less. Tucking the pelvis. The back rounds and the head drops last. At your own pace, tilting and tucking. Initiating from the pelvis and out through the head. And then taking it on a rotation, rolling cat and cow. Other direction. Still using the pelvis to initiate now to the head. And then coming back to center. Cross the legs behind you, sit back onto your butt, straighten back out. Just a few on our back kind of things and then we're good to go. From here, legs are gonna be nice and straight, hands are by your side. Pulling the knees back into a plow, rolling back. Hands underneath the hips if you need it. Feet are on the ground if you can get it. If not, you just might be floating right here with your knees overhead. Yeah, dragging the elbows in to keep you from rolling back. 
Maybe you're just tapping overhead with the feet, trying to get your feet to the ground. Maybe you're in a straddle with flexed feet, teeter-tottering to the front or back. Okay, you gotta play with a lot of different options to get better at your plow if you're not good at it already. And this is just a basic plow, this is not technical plow. And then from your hands go straight down behind you, rolling down through the back one vertebrae at a time, nice and slow. And then lowering the legs all the way to the ground. Peeling the knees back in for a hip bridge. Yes, feet are underneath the knees for the most part. Feet are a little bit wider than the hips. Pushing the pelvis straight up towards the ceiling. Maybe walk your shoulders towards your ankles. One or two small steps. Hands are still by you. Boom. Yes, nice parallel feet. Start to squeeze the booty as you push the pelvis up. Squeezing the thighs together. Pushing the pelvis up. Nice hip bridge. And then release it down, rolling down through the back from the head to the booty, one vertebrae at a time. Pausing here, one breath. Once again, pushing the pelvis straight up into a hip bridge once again. Try to push the pelvis up a little bit higher. Squeeze the booty, squeeze the knees together. Try to engage through the quads. Maybe get a little bit higher. Rolling down once again from the top of the spine through the mid-back, through the hips. Shake out the knees left and right. Straighten out the legs, roll towards the front of the room, and then sit yourself up, okay? From here, standing up, grab your mat, roll it away, cleaning up, and getting ready for class. Anyways, have a sip of water, clean down your pole, do your little hand mojo kind of stuff, and we're gonna get started in two seconds. All right, as with all of my classes, I always like to start off with grip strength exercises. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start with our split grips, okay? So level one, two class, and level one grip strength is usually pretty challenging in general, which is why we're here. Level two is starting to get a little more consistent, but can still be a challenge, but it's still gonna be a good workout nonetheless. So we're gonna start with our hand high, the split grip. One is high, one is low. Okay, I'm going to start with my right hand high and my left hand low. Okay, the bottom hand is going to have this really nice gun grip shape here where I'm pointing with the bottom uh, finger. Nine times out of ten, if I'm ever holding the pole, and this is my bottom hand or whatever hand is the bottom hand, I have the point of the ring, what is this, my pointing finger out. It helps keep the wrist straight and isolated, right? If you were to try and put it between your thumb and that finger, that means the wrist needs to cock to the side, which starts to initiate rotation. What you'll find is if you grab like this and try to hold yourself, the wrist wants to rotate itself back to neutral, causing you to rotate. So by using the bottom pointing finger down, it offers better wrist isolation. Do whatever you want to do, but I still think this is going to be the better way for you. So what we're looking at here is a static hold. We're going to go for 10 seconds. I'll demonstrate really quick, and then we're going to do it together. So I'm going to start up on the balls of my feet. I'm going to be reaching high with my right hand, pulling down through the shoulder. Bottom arm is down underneath me. And in the beginning, if you're new to this, you're gonna to wanna to try and sink your weight into the bottom arm while pulling with the top, slowly bending the knees, and then slowly trying to take the weight off of the toes so that you can lift it up off of the ground here. Ideally, we wanna be able to float for a few seconds. We're actually gonna be shooting for 10, but we're gonna see what happens, okay? If this is new for you and you cannot hold whatsoever, just get right back into the game and try to get that grip going. If you kinda of, sort of got it, and you're like, ooh, hey, check it out. It's kind of working. Wait, no, 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 it's not. Uh -oh, oh my God, I'm slipping. Okay, if you're slipping, that's fine. Fight for it. Try to stay right there and try not to touch the ground while we go for the duration of 10 seconds. Okay, so here we go. And if you're more of a seasoned pro, then maybe you can pull with the top and push with a little the bottom and you'll be able to levitate right here. Or if you're a high level, level two, or you're just something out of your range and you want to jump up and do it, you can always hop up, you catch, and you're right here. Okay, cool. So here we go, I'm gonna do this with you. Okay, right hand is high, left hand is low. Pointer finger pointing straight down so you have good wrist isolation. Here we go, coming off of the ground in three, two, one. We're levitating. Okay, maybe you have flex feet, pointed feet, depending on how much height you have here. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Coming back down, 
Take a couple quick breaths, right? You might be surviving, you might be sweating. I don't really know what's happening. I mean, I have an idea because I've taught this class before. Yes, but wipe down the pole. Yes, get the hands done really quick. We're gonna go right back into the left side. Okay, so we wanna try a 60 minute express class. Okay, we ain't got time to be drinking water and Facebooking and Instagramming and stuff, right? We're just here to get it done, get out, and then be like, hey, let's go work on our tan, depending on what time of year you're watching this video. Okay, so here we are, same deal. Other side, left hand is high, right hand is low, coming off of the ground in three, two, one, or levitating. Yes, squeezing the legs together nice and tight, maybe pointing the feet if you have a height, getting a really straight pencil, try not to be hollow and just hanging out, yes, like you're a little soldier in the army. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Coming back down, cool. Set number one is done, okay? Now we have like a little 30 second break, catch your breath, wipe off the hands. Like I said, it is pre-recorded, you could hit pause, but if you really wanna challenge yourself, don't try to work through this entire hour with me in real time. It's gonna make you a better person, okay? And I'll like you more for it. Just kidding, I like you all, you're watching me, yes? Thumbs up, smash the like button, okay? So, here we go. Other side, same deal. Now, if you notice that you might be rotating around the pole, even though you're still using this nice pistol grip, this gun grip, okay? What you're gonna need to think about is where your hand is when you grab with the top, okay? If you wrap around the pole like this, the body naturally wants to unwind the wrist back in this direction, okay? If you undercut it or you grab wound up like this, naturally the body wants to align it this direction. So that is one factor that might offer some rotation that you're not expecting. The other part is the other hand down here, right? The exact same thing. If you're a little bit off to the left or to the right side, that's gonna wanna make you rotate. So you gotta try and keep it as uh, centered as possible. Now, if you get to a point where you're like, well, I think I got it centered as much as I can and I'm naturally rotating, you might have to use the bottom hand to crank yourself back into the position that you wanna be, okay? For me, what I typically find is that even though I'm grabbing with the top hand, if you don't engage the shoulder area right here, that starts to offer rotation and that's part of the reason why I'm moving, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna actually face the camera this time so you have a different viewpoint. Yes, right hand is high, left hand is low, coming off of the ground in three, two, one. Here we go, we're hanging out, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, cool, taking it down, boom, 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 couple quick breaths, nothing too, too crazy long, we're gonna go right into the left side, yes, maybe this time I'll turn around and I'll, we can check it out from the back side, see if there's anything that's missing from this angle over here, okay, but in time, it's gonna get stronger, okay, you don't wanna have a huge bend in the elbow like you're trying to prop yourself up, you really wanna, it's almost like you're trying to like keep a straight arm and slap somebody on the ass, hey, good game, good game, Right? One of these that's pushing you down and away at the same time. Okay, left side, last drill for this little exercise right here, and then here we go. Okay, here we go, pulling with the left arm, pushing with the right arm, or jumping up, levitating, nice straight pencil, squeezing everything together. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great. Come down, take a couple of breaths, hear me talk while we talk about the next thing. So these are a great exercise, right? We need to be able to hold all of our static holds for at least 10 seconds, okay? Because we need that 10 seconds to get really good stamina. That way when we only need a few second hold as we transition through other moves, those few seconds are actually really simple, okay? Now you might wanna work on your time limit. Maybe you wanna work up to 30 seconds. That would be amazing. Right? Because if you can just hang out all the time, you have really good endurance and stamina, and you'll be able to do longer pull passes because this becomes like nothing for you. Okay? If it's working really good, you're starting to get it, you want to get good form. Okay? Other options that you might play with just when you start to get bored is switching up your legs. Right? You might be here, you might be like, da, 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 right? Here, you might be like kicking little flutter kicks, you might be working on your air walks. All those different things are possibilities or we, you could start bringing abs into it, which we might do some other stuff here, okay? So we're gonna move in to another grip, okay? We're gonna do our chair spin type of grip, okay? 
Good, we're going to use a chair spin. We're going to use that for our abs and part of, part of a little power spin, okay? So in our chair spin, right, we're typically facing forward. You're going to be to one side of the pole or another. But as we spin around the pole in a chair spin, right, we are facing forward. We're not for facing the pole, okay, looking at the pole as we go. Okay, so the inside arm is going to be comfortably high. The outside hand goes across the body, not around the chest, right? You're not going to get a whole lot of push-pull leverage in this area right here. So if you're able to reach down and maybe cross around the torso, belly button area, depending on where your belly button's at, right, you might get a little more leverage that you can push down and across with, okay? But right now we're just looking at a static hold by itself, okay? So what we'd be doing is we have the arm up nice and high, right? I still have enough energy to pull down through the shoulder. I'm not totally reaching out of socket where I can't get myself back up, okay? If that's too high to pull yourself up, you can always bring it a little bit better, a little bit lower, that you can actually sink into it and lift off. Same thing, right? Inside hand nice and high, outside hand across the body, boom, you're going to think about pulling down, push pull with this other hand right here, and then trying to get the knees off of the ground for like a little static chair spin, okay? So we're going to play with this for a few seconds, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to do a couple static holds, like where we're coming up. One, two, three, down, three, two, one. That'll be the challenge. And then maybe what you'll work on is just little tuck-ups in this chair spin with the knees going up and down. So it might look a little something like this, right? Option one, working on getting the engagement so we can hold this chair spin. And once again, even if you start to slide immediately, try to fight for it, okay? If it's not an immediate drop, but it's a slow drop, try to hold the shape even though you're sliding in space. That's okay, okay? So we're here, right? You're up. One, two, three, three, two, one. Pause, regrip. I even need to regrip just a little bit, right? Boom, here we go. Up, one, two, three, three, two, one, right? So you might be doing something slow like that to work on your static ones, or you might be coming up and doing a little bit of a tuck up, right? Like up and down, up and down, right? How many multiples can you do as you go up and down, right? Without readjusting the hands. So hopefully you're not slipping too much, okay? So that's what you're gonna play with, okay, right now on your own. You can hit pause, you can kind of just hang out. I'm gonna do my other side while you're doing some work, okay, so that I stay nice and balanced, yes? But I want you to try and get right off the bat, same deal, sinking in, a really nice static hold. Yeah, you're reaching across the body, the arms across maybe the belly section here. Boom, you're pulling with the inside, pushing and pushing down and away. With the outside, you lift, you hold, one, two, three, boom, you come back down, okay? So, that's what you're gonna do. When you're done with that, come back, and we'll be right into the next section. Okay, hopefully that went well for you, so now we're gonna add on, okay? So now we're starting to actually do a chair spin, okay? So this shouldn't be fairly new if you're a level two person. You should have chair spins in the back pocket for the most part, right? It's a very standard move, okay? Level one, uh, hopefully you've taken a level one class before you've seen this. So you're already coming in to learning what a chair spin is, okay, because it's a pull power class, not a level one class on how to do a chair spin per se, okay? But as it goes, right, we start to walk around the base of the pole. Maybe we're on releve, maybe we're getting a nice step, right, but we're keeping that inside arm nice and high as we get ready to go into our chair spin. And as you're making your steps, it's when you step on the inside leg, you start to step on it and through it, and then you reach and you lift up, and you have your chair spin that goes around the pole, okay? Ideally, you are going to slip a little bit, but we want to try and have a chair spin that does not spin that much, okay? Part of it, as you start to come around, is right here, initially, we think about grabbing and sinking down, and that tends to pull the body down in a chair spin. Okay, we wanna think about actually pulling ourselves up, which will help keep the spin up and off of the ground, right? It's kind of like when you sit on somebody when they're on the ground or on the couch, you could sit on them and you're not that heavy, but if you really wanted to make yourself heavy, you could really sit harder into somebody, and they're like, oh my God, you feel so heavy. So when you go into your chair spin, you don't wanna come around and be like, huh, and then sink down, because that's exactly what you're gonna get. You wanna feel light. You want to pull your body up, lift yourself up, okay? And that will keep you higher in the air as you do your chair spin, okay? Now, the other thing that will help you be successful when you're doing any type of spin, whether it's 
centripetal force for the most part, right? Is you want to start to come away from the pole. So that way, if you were out here, you could be floating, right? It's like tetherball or, you know, swinging something around, okay? If you just grab and sink into it, once again, that's what you get. But if you come out wide, right, you can float around the pole. Okay, so that'll help you with your chair spin. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some chair spins to the left. We're going to do some chair spins to the right. Okay, I want you to do a few chair spins in each direction, really trying to lift yourself up and float really high. It should be magical, right? When you come around, it should be like, one, two. I almost missed my steps there. I was getting all excited for you, right? Get your walk inside, outside, da, da, boom, and then up, right? So you're stepping up a step and pulling yourself up into this nice chair. You're like, ah, look at that, I did a chair spin. And then you come back out. Okay, as this starts to get better, depending on where you're at, as far as a level one or two is concerned, right? You're gonna either work on trying to get two good spins before you come to the floor, okay, and trying to stay elevated. So that doesn't mean try to get two and be like this. Ah, wait, ha, ah, oh, ha, ah, look, I got two, right? <laughs> good quality chair spin, two rotations without touching the ground and coming out in a respectable fashion, okay? If this is working good, then we're gonna to start to look at some leg variations, okay? So we might come back to our static chair hold just for a hot second, so we can look at what we're gonna be doing, okay? So you have your options, right? You're spinning, and you get your two knees up, yes? Or the one that I really like is a straight leg, one leg bent and one uh, straight, okay? So like a stag almost, yes? I'm gonna turn sideways here so you can see it. For me, I like to have my outside leg straight and the inside leg bent back. You could try both. Personally, I think, it looks better with the outside straight, but that's just me and that's up to you, okay? So what you would wanna do is as you start to whip around and pull up into your chair spin, is as both knees come up, that outside leg goes bing, nice and straight, nice and engaged, pointed foot, right? Quad is squeezing right, look, this is me with a straight leg, but I'm not using the quad. Now watch the micro bend, okay, here at the top of the knee, right? My leg just got a little bit stronger, a little bit straighter, yes? This is me with a straight leg, this is me, engaging my quad to get my legs straighter, okay? So as you start to come around for your chair spin, you come around, boom, right into the shape right here as you come around, okay? Now that first one I just spun around, but I didn't squeeze the quad as much, okay? This time I'm gonna be a little more conscious, like yeah, I did it, I held it, I didn't eat it, good, come back and fine tune, come around, two, boom, squeeze, yeah, pulling up, that way I can come back out, and then when you land, you have this nice one-two landing shape as you come out of it, okay? This is where I'm at with my current flexibility, okay? Ideally, I have, I have a rounded back if you haven't noticed it yet so far. You would wanna have like this, you're sitting in a chair, right, in your leg. So look, for me, my straight leg with a neutral spine only goes this high, okay? Comfortably. And if I want to get this leg higher, I tend to round my back to get it up there. We want to try and eliminate that if possible. Okay. So in a perfect world, my chair spin with a straight leg would look like this, right? Here and then, uh, uh, right? So we're fighting for that little bit right there. Okay. So this is your next little task that you're going to do. Do a few to the left, do a few to the right. Yes. Working on getting a nice chair spin that goes around a couple of times without major drop towards the ground, and then coming back around, depending on where your level's at, and trying to sweep a little bit more and up and getting around, but having a nice strong entrance and a nice strong exit where you can come up and be like, mm, let me show you the other side. Da, 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 da. Not so good, it's my dad's side, right? Boom, and over here. Okay, so hit pause, do some work, and we'll go on to the next section. All right, good, let's move on to the next thing. So we've done some grip strength, we did a little power spin, a spin action, right? Something to bring the legs up. Let's do some abs real quick, and we'll move into the last little section here, okay? So our level one, two class, the thing that never is gonna go away is our strongholds, our tuck ups, things like that. So we're gonna have a few different variations. I'll do it from a few different angles so you can see what's going on. But if you need a little reminder, here's our strong hold, right? You're gonna start with your booty in front of the pole. The pole is gonna be coming up through the side body in between the armpit and the shoulder here so that you can squeeze everything nice and shut. 
shove the side body into that cold metal right there, wrapping around, okay? Outside hand is gonna come on top, right above it right here, so that you can see your pretty little face poking through here, okay? So you don't wanna be like this, where you're covering yourself, holding on for dear life. Okay, we wanna squeeze in really tight, okay? Pulling down, and then slowly, we can bring our knees up, and then we hold for a few seconds, and we'll bring it back down. Okay, so I'm going to do a few of these with you in real time, but then we're also going to have some different modifications and some fun stuff to play with. Fun, challenging, hard, maybe some rocks left and right. I like this kind of stuff. Okay, if you're a little bit stronger, okay, you can always reach a little bit higher and pull yourself up and then bring your knees up and you can stay in the air as you do these tuck ups up and down. Okay, if you notice that yourself that you happen to grab and slide all the way down you might want to grab just a little bit lower and really squeeze and slowly work on leaning back just a little bit yes so that you can bring the knees up as you come up here okay let me turn sideways for the camera here so you can see some different things right also what will help keep you in place is tension right so if I try to reach forward I can't and if I try to push my booty back I can't because the pole's in the way so if I'm reaching forward with a little bit of energy and pushing back I'm creating tension between these two spots right here which help reduce slide okay now it's kind of hard because once you start to tuck the legs up you lose this contact point but as soon as you bring it back down you can regain it right so there's a little bit of balance there especially in the beginning when you're new to this a little bit challenging but once again i reach here this other hand's right on top i'm squeezing in with the elbows and i'm pulling down at the same time and then i squeeze the legs i lift and then i bring it back down okay so i'm going to do these with you let's shoot for Let's do five in a row. Let's see what happens. We'll do both sides, okay? Two options. If you're a little bit stronger, try not to touch the ground as you bring the knees up, okay? If you need to tap, take a breath, re-grip, and come up, you can, but make it quick, right? Try not to let it constantly re-gripping, even though you might be sliding. Or the third option is some straight legs, which I'll probably do in the second set uh, as we do this. So we're going to shoot for five at a nice steady pace. Don't just be like, knees up, and then drop them back down. Try to be in control as you bring it up and squeeze at the top, and then lower the legs back down. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit higher so I can stay off the ground. I know five is going to be a little bit hard for me. Grabbing a little higher. Here we go. Squeezing in, pulling up, coming off the ground. Three, two, one. Up for one, and back. Two, and in. Three, this is fun, and down. Four, and down. Five, and back. I need these, big time, okay? These are good. I've been drinking too much beer and wine in the name of Corona. Okay, couple quick breaths, right? We wanna stay on top of the ball. Shifting to the other side, it's my weak side, okay? So, same deal, here we are. Left arm on the inside, down below, squeezing in the armpit. Outside hand comfortably high. Grab a little bit higher so I can pull myself up. Coming off the ground in three, two, one. Up for one, and back. Two, and down. Three, and back. Four, and down. Five, and back. Good. Now you can take quick 30 seconds or 45. Quick drink of water, wipe down the pole, a regrip, whatever it is you might need. We're gonna do another set. This time we'll do three, okay? I'm gonna do them with straight legs, so if you wanna try something a little bit harder, you can, okay? Straight legs only. If you're a total show off, you'll come up with the straight legs. You'll open for like a little V peekaboo. You'll close back up, it'll look like this. Boom, boom, straight legs, hello, and then back and down, yes? So if you wanna do for a few of those, you can. I'm probably not. Maybe I'll do the third one like that, and I might go a little bit quicker. I'm gonna see what happens, yes? Or you're just still working your tuck ups really nice and slow, okay? If the tucks are working, but you want a little extra challenge, okay, at the top, you could straighten one leg and then bring it back down. It'll almost simulate kind of like halfway doing a straight leg, or you could pull the knees up, pause, straighten both legs, back, and then down too, which is always a nice option, yeah? Suck in some air. Okay, here we go. Now, three, 
with a mod of variation depending on where you're at. Okay, I'm going to do straight legs. We'll do three of them, and then maybe on the third one, I'll do a little V open. You could do more than that if you want to. I'll give you some different options. Yes. All right, here we go. Squeezing in, right side, left hand right on top. My legs are straight for straight leg pike ups. Three, two, one. Up for one, and back. Two, and back. There you go. Last one, number three. Open, close, back down. There we go, good one. Take a quick breath, nothing too long. Go right into the second side, I'm huffing and puffing. I haven't done any running this week. Weather's finally good. Time to pull some laps around the block. Oh yeah. States are starting to reopen. Ain't going anywhere still for another two weeks. Okay, other side. Squeezing with the inside arm, outside hand on top. My feet are together because I'm doing straight leg pikes. You know which variation you're doing. Coming off the ground, three, two, one, up for one, and down. Two, and back. And last one, number three, up, open, high, and back, and down. Yeah, I need these. Okay, so if these start to get stronger for you, which in time they inevitably will, yes, as you come up into this nice straddle, if you're a high level two kind of person, you can work on rocks to the left and to the right. So it's like a twisty, kind of left and right here. Oh, they go pro down, they die. That's okay. So, it would look something like this. You would come into a variation, and I'm not gonna do a bunch of them, I'm just gonna show you in case you wanna do an additional set or challenge yourself in some way, shape, or form. Okay, you would come in here, boom, you'll pull up to the side and twist, and twist, and twist, and twist, right? Working on kind of like a flare leg or a rotation left and right. Tons of obliques there, okay? So we're gonna move on to the next section. If you wanna do some more of these, or get a breath, or drink some water, whatever it is, hit pause. We'll be into the next section in one second. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up with the last section. We did some grip strength, we did some arms, we did some upper body, did a little bit of core work right there. So we're gonna round out with just the legs here. We're gonna wrap up with just some leg hangs, okay? We're going to do a static hold here. So if you need to press pause and warm up your inside leg hang and your outside leg hang, you're going to go ahead and do that, okay? If you're a level one student, you're learning to get to your leg hangs, okay? Maybe you're starting to get them off of the ground, but if not, I'm going to give you just a quick, quick tutorial off of the ground because it'll still work for you, okay? We're looking for our inside leg hang. Okay, I'm going to lay down here. You might be starting right from the ground only, okay? You're going to want the pole close to the side body where it's really nice and soft right here. And hopefully you have a little bit of a pole to work with at the bottom of the base here. I have just a little bit of thread. Depending on what kind of pole you have, you might have some exposed. So this might not work as good for you. You might need to get a pillow or something to prop you up. Or just figure out how to get it nice and closed over. Okay. But if we're working on an inside leg hang from the ground, right, you're going to push the pole so you can start to roll back. Hook it inside with the leg. Yes, not like this. Not hooking with the foot. Don't ever give me this bullshit right here. No matter what level you're in, don't even hook with the foot. Fuck that. Okay, that's a terrible, terrible habit to have. Okay, <laughs> get in really tight. Squeeze this leg down nice and tight. Point through the foot, pushing the shin in. This leg is squeezing in here, right? And then the other leg can go straight back. So it should almost feel like a pigeon stretch. Okay, I feel it pulling me this way, so I want to scoot just a little bit closer to the pole. Yes, and then we're here, okay? And I'm going to try and keep this rear leg straight back and off of the ground. Don't do this. Try to keep it hovering here, okay? So you're going to get a nice squeeze and a pull right here, and this leg's engaging, and it's almost thick. That's the counterbalance part of it, okay? So if you're new to leg hooks, typically it's counterbalance, right? My upper body is on this side. Something needs to offset it. That's where this other leg goes back, and that's how you kind of teeter in the middle of the pole. This leg is squeezing down. I'm feeling it on the outside of my, it's not even my shin, but it's kind of like almost on the calf with the lower part here. Yeah, you're feeling it, okay? Boom, and then you'll stop, you'll come back, you'll work your way back out, okay? Maybe you're working on your outside, so I might scoot down just a little bit more so I can get a little more pull. Like right now, it's right at the bottom of my ribs. Yes, yeah, same deal. Rolling back here, hook with the inside leg, squeeze it down, yes, yeah, squeeze, 
push back and pull down. It's almost like you're trying to strip the chrome or the polish off of your pole. And then this leg now goes straight back, okay? And it's reaching back. You can feel it kind of bobbing back there. Okay, try not to let the leg slide. There's a lot of pinch on that outside part of the knee pocket, yes? And then I'm trying to turn to the outside so that my side body is pushing into the pole because this is going to be my other area of grip right here, okay? So you might need to pause, pause, and warm up here on the left side, right side, inside, and out, or both, okay? If you're working on something more aerial, A, you already know what to do, but if you don't and you need a little bit of a refresher because you're almost there, yes, when you start to come back, Right, we can get nice and low. So it's almost like we did the chopper, the stronghold. We're gonna get a little bit lower. Yes, it's in the side body. I'm squeezing, I'm pulling back, boom. Hook with the inside, back with the counterbalance, squeezing here, starting to loosen it. Driving my shoulder into the back of the pole is what keeps me from sliding. If you're like, I can't do it, I can't do it. It's because your shoulder is not pushing into the back of the pole. Without this, you will never stick well, you will because you'll get really strong legs, but what comes first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know which this one is. I don't know if this is the chicken or the egg, but eventually the legs get strong enough that you don't need the shoulder as much until you get there. But they, you gotta work both at the same time. If you try to focus up here, you'll have a harder time getting this back here, and then you're always wondering why it's so hard to get the inside leg to hook so you can get a full descent while you're upside down talking to a camera. Okay, cool, right? And then you work your way up. So here we are. I'm gonna do this with you, okay? 30 second hold, okay? Where do I wanna put the phone? I'll put it over here, start the timer, and then when I get there, I'll look at the time. So here we go. I'm on my right side, right inside leg hook first, 30 seconds. Here we go. We're working our way in, we're hooking, we're back, we're laying back. There we go, 30 seconds away. Boom, I can see the clock. Yeah, you might cross your hands over your head, over your chest, like you're on the subway, tired, waiting to get to your next stop, or you're just sitting at the park, enjoying the warm spring sun, 60 degrees today, which doesn't feel much like uh, spring, but we're getting there. Yeah, 10 more seconds, holding it. Maybe you're bouncing the rear leg just to get a little exercise, a little counter stretch while you're back there, right? I haven't been doing enough of these myself. And time coming up. Really nice and easy. 30 seconds, no big deal, right? In BD. Okay, take a quick breath. Okay, and then we're gonna switch outside, leg hook. We're still on the same side body, right? We we're on the right inside. I'm still gonna stay here, do the left outside leg hook, okay? So we just did a right inside leg hook. Now we're going to do a left outside leg hook. If you don't know what the difference is, come on, man, right? This is intro step. This is the inside of the pole. This is the outside of the pole. And if you don't know that the outside leg is hooking over, you're like, wait, is that the inside? Is that the outside? Start saying it to yourself. Outside, outside, outside. Slap yourself before you get there, okay? Cool. Here we go. Starting the timer, okay? Now we're going to be doing an outside leg hook, grabbing with the right body stronghold. Here we go, chopper and back, outside leg hook, squeezing, pushing back, we're in it, and go. Okay, really arch back, drive this right armpit into the pole, that will keep you from sliding. Really squeeze with this leg, not just squeezing, but pulling down and across, turning the body away. I know it's, this is difficult, the outside leg hook is hard for me on my bad side. I don't understand it. I'm slipping just a little bit. We're doing okay. Maybe five more seconds. Really drive. Remember I said you could interlace the fingers or grab your wrists and pull back. That'll help you stick a little bit more. And time. Good. Great. Couple quick breaths, okay? I'm not gonna spend too much time, right, waiting. And we'll get into this last part. Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting for me too because I don't do my bad sides very often. So you get to see me suffer just with you. Same deal, okay? My inside leg hook is not too bad on my bad side. It's my outside leg hook on my bad side. That is just pure dookie, okay? So, here we go. 
Might as well just get it done, right? I can always bitch about it, or you can just shut the fuck up and do some work, son. Okay, so I'm doing my left inside leg hook. This is my bad side. Maybe you'll be lucky it's your inside, okay? Or you're working it from the ground if you're a level one kind of person and you can't invert. All right, here we go. Chopping back, hook, squeeze. Oh, it already hurts on the outside of the shin, but you can do this, Brandon. It's only 30 seconds. Where's the clock? Over there. Okay, great. Push, squeeze. This is not so bad. Right? Uh huh. Come on. Squeeze. Oh my God, my nerves are so weak there. Do do do. Uh huh. Uh, ten more seconds. We're doing good. Come on. Push. Hold. Four seconds. Ah. Come on. And working our way up. Whew. That's not too bad. Okay, I mean, it's not great, but we did it, yeah? Okay, a couple quick breaths. Now you're gonna really see me suffer, okay? I don't even know if I can stay on the pole the entire time. I might have to do level one, two-ish kind of stuff where I'm like halfway holding on. This is my one thing, okay? That's like, you should be proficient as an instructor. It's just one of those things that's kind of shitty, okay? Here we go, starting the clock, doing a right outside leg hook, 30 seconds, and then we're done. Okay, and then you can do whatever it is you want to do. Take another class, go do stretch. I don't know what. I'm about to have some drinks, some drank. Okay, here we go. Come on, Brandon, we can do this. Chop ring up. We go back. Outside leg hook. Come on, squeeze Brandon down and back. Yes, yeah, squeeze it. Oh, look, it's kind of sticking where we at. Good. I'm holding, driving the shoulder in. Trying not to be a hypocrite. It really hurts on the side body. Yeah, my right leg wants to. Oh, where the clock so far away? Come on, Brandon. Squeeze, point the toe. Yes, don't give me some shitty sickle feet. <sighs> 10 seconds, great. Come on. <sighs> mm -hmm. Oh, point the foot. I can feel it flexing like a little bitch. Good, and coming back out. Oh, look, I did it. <laughs> I did something today. Okay, and pause right there. Okay, my friends, that wraps up. Another Pole Power Express class. This is just a pre-record this time, so I don't even know. This could be like 45 minutes. But in reality, if you have the ability to pause, move forward, go back, reassess the information, whatever that might be. Like I said, we've got some exciting stuff coming up in our neck of the woods. We just signed a lease on a new office space down the way. So we're definitely going to have some space to get a little bit wider. Photo shoots, video shoots, if you happen to be in the Connecticut area. And I do have some pretty decent video camera skills, even though I never publish them. Uh, I'm going to be fine-tuning those a little bit more. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited that you guys took this. Eventually, I'm going to start moving into Zoom as well, doing some classes weekly. So stay tuned for that. As always, if you'd like to support me during the time of COVID, you can always tip me, donate, either sharing, liking, commenting, spreading the love, or you can tip me through Venmo, AcroBrandon, A-C-C-R-O, B-R-A-N-D-O-N, or on PayPal, AcroBrandon, and Gmail. I'll see you guys in the next video.